You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make a full bridge rectifier. Alright, so before we build it, let's understand the concept. This is the symbol for a diode. A diode only allows current to flow in one direction, from the anode to the cathode. So if we were to apply alternating current to a diode, every positive cycle would give us voltage across it, and it would end up looking like this. However, today we're going to be building a full bridge rectifier. This is the schematic for a full bridge rectifier. So basically what happens with this one is that every single cycle of the alternating current is put into it, so it ends up looking like this. And so we get that pulsating DC current coming out of this side with the positive and the negative. A lot of times though, you'll see bridge rectifiers and circuits just drawn like this, with the two AC sides, the positive and the negative. And then wires going out for where the negatives come out and where the positive comes out. Now since this alone gives us that pulsating DC current, we need something to smooth it out a bit. So by adding a high value capacitor in parallel, that pulsating DC current gets smoothed out to a relative line. And over here is going to be the new outputs with the positive and negative. So now if that concept understood, you could use big diodes such as this in that configuration I showed, or you could use rectifiers such as this. As you can see, the two inner pins here are going to be the AC, and then over here we have our negative and our positive. You can salvage these off of most electronic projects such as TVs and a variety of other things. There are also rectifiers such as this one which are made to handle a ton of power, and if you find one of these, you can make a full bridge rectifier that can give you quite a lot of watts. I'm going to be using a perf board such as this in order to make it look all nice. And so I start by putting one of these rectifiers in these pins over here. Now I'm going to take a couple of these 250 volt 100 microfarad capacitors and I'm going to connect them up so the negative will be on the same side as the negative of the rectifier and the positive will be on the positive side. And I'm going to put them just side by side so that we can connect them in parallel in a moment. So now that I have all these connected to the board, let's go ahead and solder on these pins. Alright, so now that we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and snip off some lengths of wire. And go ahead and strip it down. And now we're going to use these wires to connect the negatives to the negative and the positives to the positive. Alright, so now that we've got those points soldered up, there's only two more things we need to do. One, solder a positive and negative output wire to the end of this capacitor down here. And two, solder wires to these for the input to the AC. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have this AC mains voltage wire here. Let's go ahead and just connect that to both sides from the wires of the input we just soldered on. And now that we have those connected, let's go ahead and flip it on and hope nothing happens. Okay, nothing's happening, so that means we're pretty good. Okay, so now as you can see, I have the circuit hooked up to my voltmeter here. Let's go ahead and flip it on and see how much DC voltage we're getting. As you can see, we're getting around 169 volts DC. Now, when I flipped it off, you can see we're still measuring a high voltage. So that's because these capacitors are holding a charge. Before handling it, you're going to want to discharge them. In order to do that, simply touch both ends of the capacitor with a metal object. Remember, capacitors hold up a big charge. So you're going to actually probably going to want to be using a resistor to discharge them. We may have scuffed up the board a little bit, but on the bright side, that did not touch me. Because that would hurt really, really bad. And as you can see, we've now discharged the capacitors. By simply soldering a high value resistor between these two rails, it'll let the capacitors discharge through that resistor. This full bridge rectifier is going to come in handy in a lot of projects that need that DC voltage. And the good thing about this is that if you needed a lower DC voltage, but still wanted it to be somewhat efficient, you could put an AC transformer before this in order to step it down, and then this rectifier that we built here would still work just fine to give you a DC voltage. Remember though that we got around 169 volts coming out of the output, even though the input is only 120 volts. 
In the meantime, before I find a project to hook this up to, let's go ahead and have some fun by connecting this 470 microfarad capacitor rated at 35 volts. Okay, so I've got it wired in. Let's go ahead and flip the switch. Well, I was kind of thinking this would be a problem. You may have noticed that the capacitor didn't explode. However, something did. It's nothing with the circuit. It's just the wires I used to connect it up. I used too thin of wires to connect it up so it wasn't able to handle the amps on what was practically a short circuit there. And so as you can see, it all just sort of blew up. However, soldering on thicker wires than what I have used will definitely solve this problem. Okay, I've got it all plugged in now. Let's go ahead and flip it on. Obviously, some rectifiers are not going to be able to handle such high current. However, this rectifier is rated for 120 amps at 700 volts, so we should be fine using this. Alright, so I've got the circuit all hooked up again, and as you can see, I've added a brand new rectifier. The old one's been thrown into the box of shame. Let's go ahead and flip it on and see if we get the correct voltage. So in my hurry to re-solder on a new rectifier, I soldered on this capacitor again, but I did it backwards, so it's really burning hot right now, and it's kind of toasted. The problem before was just pure stupidity. I wasn't slowing down to make sure that I was, for instance, putting the capacitors facing the right way, which is just such a simple thing to mess up that you really just shouldn't do it. And so hopefully by leaving all these failures in the video, you'll be able to prevent these problems from happening to yourself. But with that all said, let's flip it on, and after double checking anything, there's no short circuits or anything, and I don't have a load that would draw a huge amount of current, and I've even added a fuse back here. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see if we get the correct voltage. There we go, and as you can see, we are getting 168 volts. The moral of this project here is, is make sure, first off, that you don't connect huge loads to this. And second off, be sure that you actually pay attention to what's happening on your circuit before you plug it in. So yeah guys, those things will make you be safer, and that's definitely a good thing. In order to bleed out these capacitors to make sure we don't shock ourselves as we saw earlier, we can go ahead and place a resistor like this. By touching both ends of the capacitor, you can see that the voltage is draining pretty quickly out of it. There we go. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to get our weekly videos inside your subscription newsfeed, hit the subscribe button below. So with that said, I'll see you guys next week. Be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to simply and easily electroplate metal.